everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you joining us from across the globe. We at STP truly hope you all are doing well and taking care of yourself and staying safe. With that said, welcome to our today's episode of the STP training webinars. The title for our talk today is Continuous Secure Testing, Stepping Stones to a New Era of Your Testing Brigade. Joining us on the webinar is Christina Thalaisingham. I am Smita Mishra. I'm a tester myself and a sustainability enthusiast too. And I'm beyond uh, just excited to host you, Christina, and all of you at the STP uh, webinars. Before we get started, let me take you through a couple of uh, updates that may be of some interest to you. Firstly, uh, there is an upcoming webinar, High Impact Customer Testing in Agile and Continuous Delivery Environments. Uh, it's on 8th of July. The speaker is Luke Frailer, who is the CEO and co-founder of Center Code. In this presentation, Luke is going to show you how to expand your testing strategy through structured alpha, beta, and delta tests that leverage real users outside the lab to support your agile and continuous delivery methods. The link is up for you to register. Please do go for it. Also, we are inviting proposals for STP webinars from all of you, and this shall be open all year round, so you can submit, submit anytime you're ready. All the details along with the submission form are at the link given on the screen. Please do go through them. In case you have recommendations on topics or speakers, do email them to us. We will be very happy to hear from you. And if you are on Twitter, please share the call for papers information and also about this webinar with your followers and connections. You can add STP's Twitter handle on your tweets, which is at Software Test Pro. Please do add the hashtag STP webinar to your tweets. Uh, please also note down the Twitter handle of our speaker today. Feel free to reach out to her after the webinar and uh, connect with her, learn from her. So let's get started with the webinar now. Welcome, Christina. We are very excited to have you with us today. It's your STP debut. And let me quickly introduce you for all of us here. Christina Thelaisingham is a senior test engineer with Medidata Solutions. She's, uh, she's got six years of experience in testing. She has a background in software development too, on PHP web development and Android mobile development. She is skilled in test automation in both functional and non-functional testing and has been actively contributing in this space through her meetups and conference talks. Now let's hear from her and get started for our session today. Continuous secure testing, stepping stones to a new era of your testing brigade. The floor is all yours, Christina. I'm going to sit back and learn from you. Thank you so much, Smita. Thank you for that introduction. And I am so glad, as uh, you mentioned, this is my debut in uh, the STP webinar session. I am so glad to be part of this. Um, and yes, I uh, work for Medidata Solutions. Uh, basically, we work with clinical trials. Uh, trying to make a change in uh, the uh, world of uh, the uh, patient in uh, all over the world. Uh, we are part of this all systems. Uh, and you might have seen me in various different uh, conferences in the past, mainly the Selenium conference and conferences like the Perf Guild and so on. Uh, that's my Twitter, Twitter handle, so go ahead and tweet away. And let's get into business, right? So I have a couple of questions for you, right? Do you, is there any uh, situation where you uh, you were worried about security testing or someone uh, was talking about security testing, but the team wasn't ready to get those sharpened wheels running uh, on, in their project? Uh, people were like, they were too busy with uh, fixing the bugs, uh, the functional bugs or the, the features getting it out there, but nobody seemed to be worried if the application was secure. If, yeah, I mean, I've been there, so I, I assume that all of you have had uh, such uh, a situation. So next is then the bad thing happens where uh, a, a cat catastrophe happens, uh, a disaster strikes, and in terms of security, and then you, the, the developers or the team doesn't know which part of the application led to the whole failure of the particular application. 
it could be something very minute something that we testers could have t uh, tested before right so don't worry so here spongebob's here to tell you that we've got security testing and we're going to get it under control by doing just a few changes uh, a, a bit of training to the uh, quality engineering team we can get there by adding some value to the quality of the application right so we are going to talk about continuous security testing uh, ideally the stepping stones to a new era of your testing brigade or the testing team is going to enter a new phase of uh, testing you might have uh, be a, a team that's only doing manual testing uh, you might be uh, a team that's doing automation testing. You might be a team who is doing continuous testing. But how do we get to the part of doing understanding security testing and doing it manually? And then how do we get to the part of automation, automating the security testing? And then how do we get our test teams to get to the level of doing continuous security testing. That's what we are going to discuss about. Uh, so as I speak, uh, start uh, thinking within you uh, and start relating it to uh, what you do, because there could be so many things, so many scenarios or test scenarios that you're already covering around it. How can we add value? So the agenda will definitely, because it's about security testing. We will talk what security testing is uh, for those who aren't aware of it. And then we will start looking at how we can convert the quality engineers to think and believe security so that we can have it part of the software development life cycle. Right? So uh, I know convert is a very heavy word, but what I'm trying to say is uh, we, we need to believe in something to go forward with it. So uh, we will discuss on uh, how we can embed the security process, uh, security testing process in the QE process or existing QE process, which will then lead to continuous security testing, which will comprise of uh, two demos on uh, how we can achieve that with open source applications uh, so that it will be easy for the people who are just entering the world of security testing. So yes, first of all, what is security? Security is basically a set of measures that we have to make sure that the application is protected from any unforeseen malicious attacks or uh, basically making sure that no loopholes exist in the application so that uh, the attackers can exploit or basically slither into the application, right? So how do we make sure that, or how do we know that the particular application is secure? We need to test it and behave like malicious attackers. Basically think in the way how the malicious attackers think and try to find those loopholes in the application so that they get fixed. Uh, so the developers can have a look at it, the security experts can help them out, and they could fix those uh, loopholes uh, so that they do not get exploited when they go into production. So I'm just going to dive deep into this. Uh, these are the top 10 uh, vulnerabilities uh, that were provided by OS. It was last mentioned in 2017 but these are there are definitely more uh, vulnerabilities other than for the ones listed here but these are the main things that need to be considered uh, because they are the most highest amount of vulnerabilities that they have seen so uh, if for anyone who's not aware of OVAS it's basically uh, a community uh, called the Open Web Application Security Project, who contribute uh, into uh, understanding what security testing is, uh, and uh, they encourage on people understanding how to sec uh, do security testing on their applications. They have provided a lot of tools. We'll talk about that later, but uh, just uh, for an introduction. So I'm going to talk through these. 
so that you will uh, get an idea of maybe we, you already doing uh, certain tests around these uh, scenarios or features. So how we can uh, you can think how we can use that in enhance your uh, testing. So first of all, this is like frequently found and one of the uh, biggest issues in most of the application uh, is injection. Commonly, uh, most of you might be knowing something called SQL injection, which is commonly uh, tested uh, in, in certain uh, companies or industries. So this is something that can be, uh, get, can really uh, affect your application because uh, as you can see, I mentioned uh, a query here. So if you give a certain uh, invalid data, it could be through a URL, it could be through uh, a text box, uh, any point where you can send in value and retrieve value, uh, if your uh, particular code is not, uh, it lacks validation or sanitation, uh, then it could uh, give the data out, basically certain rows in the data or basically even table, uh, which can obviously create a lot of chaos. Uh, so this is something that we can look at because we are, we are testing uh, uh, the text boxes, uh, the URLs and so on. So let's move on to the next one. Next is broken authentication, number two. So here, uh, as the image uh, say, speaks it all, the attacker can use uh, manual measures or even automated measures to try to gain control of any account. Now say uh, the application, uh, your application uh, doesn't have very good session management and say someone logs in and then uh, they just do, forget, forget to log out and it never logs out for like ages, then it's prone to be exploited. Uh, so these are things that we are already testing, aren't we? So uh, we can obviously use those uh, tests and add more value as we, uh, going forward, you will understand what we can do with these kind of tests, right? The next thing is uh, number three, sensitive data exposure. I, as a end user, wouldn't use an application if I know that they are basically uh, prone to expose my credit card details, my social security number. I'm not gonna use it. I'm sure you feel the same, right? So in the same way, will our end users be happy if uh, these, uh, these particular this this data is uh, exposed, right? Not really, not at all, actually. So in that way, we we need to look into that aspect in case like there's an order made. Make sure like the credit card numbers are not visible. Most of the time, yes, they are not. But there could be ways where you could use some calls, try to pull it out uh, from uh, the particular order page or something of that sort. So moving to the next one, uh, this is uh, number four. Uh, this is XML, external entity. So as you see, uh, this is uh, something that needs to be uh, controlled in the code level. So in the code needs to be uh, intact so that it can handle this issue. So uh, Basically, if you upload an XML input which is corrupted or is, um, has malicious details, it could uh, give out some unwanted, uh, uh, sorry, uh, unwanted details or basically details that the attacker wants but you don't want them to know. So things like the URI, uh, the internal file uh, details, the internal ports. So th if you if you reveal the port. That means they can definitely try and exploit and get access to that. So this can be mostly looked into in terms of static, static code analysis, see if the code is vulnerable. There could be also vulnerable dependencies that you are using, that you need to use new versions of it, or even the integrated system. So this is where you need to also see the integration points, whether they are secure or not. Next, we'll move on to broken access control. 
this is another thing that I think most of the testers make sure that they test. They make sure to understand that all the test, uh, the users, their privileges are intact. So the the commonly used word would be a general user doesn't have admin access or cannot see the admin panel uh, because if uh, the particular user can see, a general user can see the admin panel, they could use other techniques like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and so on, and try to get unwanted, uh, I mean, it basically data that needs shouldn't be given to the uh, users or the attacker, right? So therefore, these need to be tested. It's already being tested, but maybe we should add more value to that, where trying to see yeah, if more of these uh, aspects or panel components can be uh, basically accessed by users who shouldn't be accessing them and so on. Even by changing to certain tokens, uh, session tokens and so on. So the next thing is security misconfiguration. Uh, now this uh, is something where in case of a configuration issue that's done in say the integration point or certain pages which are not used have been completely forgotten, the existence has been completely forgotten, but then the attacker will use those pages, right? So, and then certain uh, services like service calls, they can uh, provide unwanted, uh, I mean, details that shouldn't be provided to the end user. Uh, where uh, uh, it could be some values in the cookies or some uh, tokens that uh, shouldn't be provided. So therefore, again, it depends on the configuration. So that needs to be also looked into. This most of the time happens when there is integration of various different components like the cloud storage and so on. Number seven. So this is something I think is again, commonly tested in the um, testing uh, cycle uh, where you would do cross-site scripting, where you would try, again, it's an injection. You inject uh, a malicious client-side script that would manipulate the application to provide you details of the application that shouldn't be provided. So therefore, uh, you, again, the application gets exploited there. So in, in especially all these uh, in, uh, input points, like the text boxes, uh, the URLs, are again the vulnerable points uh, when it comes to uh, cross-site scripting. And as I mentioned in red, OWASP specifies that cross-site scripting is apparently found in two-thirds of all applications. I know it, this is uh, an easy test uh, in terms of testing, but it keeps getting slipped away because we are more focused in functional. I'm not saying functional shouldn't be tested, so, uh, but we tend to uh, forget the existence of non-functional because we are too busy uh, fixing the functional wheels and we don't uh, think of these things because quality, is also about having a secure uh, and a high performance application and so on as well. Next is insecure deserialization. So this is something uh, apparently again is quite common where uh, what serialization does is uh, you would see in certain um, objects, uh, their objects get transferred to bytes and bytes get uh, transferred to objects. So in case uh, the algorithm that you're using to serialize isn't robust enough and it's easy to be cracked, right? Uh, in that way, they would be able to get uh, all these uh, values that you shouldn't be providing to the outside world. Most of the time you would see cookies having certain values that shouldn't be, provide, uh, shouldn't be seen uh, by uh, the outside world which will be serialized, but uh, these uh, details can be then uh, decoded and then that could uh, uh, enable the attacker to uh, attack the application. Like there's things like uh, CSRF tokens, which 
uh, most of the uh, banks or any financial sectors use to make sure that the, the sessions are handled, but in case they can be decoded and uh, manipulated, then it could lead to serious issues as well. So this also needs to be checked. Next thing is pretty much common. It also uh, be, behaves in uh, the integration testing where you would want to, if you're security testing the application, you should make sure that all components are uh, looked into as well. So therefore, uh, if the component that is connected to you or basically integrated to your application, any sort of library, say uh, frameworks, um, software modules that they are using has issues in terms of if they are vulnerable, then you can your application also could get exploited. Uh, maybe it's some uh, integrated system, or it could be something within the application as well. So if you're using an older version, that's why they always do upgrades. If you notice, uh, developers would say, okay, there's a new uh, version of in this language or this framework, uh, we need to upgrade it as soon as possible because that's because there's, they've spotted vulnerabilities, they've seen it being exploited and that's why they want it to be uh, upgraded. So uh, if there's upgrades also, you need to make sure that all, as much as possible, uh, all components are uh, not vulnerable for attacks from the outside. And finally, uh, we need to have sufficient logging and monitoring. So this is not most most of the time uh, quality engineers job, but it needs to be there, irrespective of uh, security testing. I mean, about being secure, but also like performance, the ability for the application to function, everything is, uh, is best when there is uh, logging and monitoring because uh, the attackers are very smart. They can come, they can exploit the application, uh, they wouldn't even leave a trace but we don't even realize that the application is quietly getting exploited. But if we have the logging and the monitoring, then we can uh, observe this and raise a, fla a flag at an early stage rather than waiting for the entire application to crash up, right? So we've looked at all these uh, particular tests, uh, particular security vulnerabilities. We've seen how uh, we could test them in terms of certain aspects. But why is it important to continuously test security? Have it part of our continuous testing? Well, end of the day, as I mentioned to you, as an end user, I wouldn't use, if I know the application is insecure, I didn't use the application, right? So in the same way, we want to gain our customers' trust. And therefore, when they realize that the application is secure, uh, that's how we re, uh, gain the trust. And as you know, we do regression, like that's like the rule of thumb for any quality engineer. Regression is done every time new features come in, right? So if a new feature can break an old functionality, a new feature can definitely break the security of the application, right? So therefore, uh, it could, like already existing feature, you put a text box there and then it's not been uh, properly masked and sanitized, and therefore, there you go. It's, it's there for, uh, it's exposed to injection or uh, cross-site scripting and so on. And moreover, the entire team gets the communication. That's the whole uh, idea of continuous testing, right? So therefore, it's always good for the entire team to know if the application is uh, sustainably, I mean, it's, it's secure, right? And the next thing is, if your application lives on the fact of creating revenue, it's like an e-commerce application, a single, I mean, just a couple of minutes downtime would make you lose so much of money. So if your application gets exploited, then it could uh, basically impact uh, the uptime, or basically it will get, it will crash, it could crash, you could lose a lot of data, you could, anything could happen. So in that way, uh, you are not, uh, you, if, as you continuously test, you won't get affected in terms of uh, revenue and so on. At least you could avoid it to a certain extent. 
uh, then the other thing is uh, now there's GDPR regularity fines that are uh, basically put in if you uh, expose any sensitive data, uh, give access to uh, basically if there's any broken access control and so on. So if you are a component that is integrated with some other application and just because of your application being vulnerable, that application also got exploited, right? So then you would have to face those fines. This is just one example, but there's so many that could happen. So again, a loss of money. Again, uh, if you, rather than maintaining the application, you will have to spend more money on, uh, if the application is insecure. So when you do frequent testing and you find those little bugs and fix them at the early stage, you wouldn't have to uh, go to the right end and then basically fix this uh, build up of a massive bug, right? So we've looked at all this, right? Now we want to see how we can have this whole security testing part of the software development cycle. Security needs to be start thought about from the very beginning, not maybe towards the end where we bring in the pen testers, they do their testing, and they find these massive bugs and then you sit and fix them. No, that's not gonna work. You should start thinking secure in terms of requirements itself. Uh, you need to put in a security test plan at the design phase, right? And even when coding, uh, there needs to be a static code analysis that needs to be done. Now there are code reviews, definitely. Uh, there are code analysis tools as well, uh, which also do some part of the, um, the security uh, static code analysis. Some of the tools do make sure that they check certain uh, aspects of that so that they do not uh, get exploited when the application is live. But that needs to be brought in as a practice overall. This doesn't stick only to the quality engineering, but overall to the entire team in terms of, basically, uh, if you're following a uh, sprint and so on, uh, agile, then a sprint team, a team uh, who's involved in the building of the story needs to be uh, involved in the whole process of being secure. And then we finally, when the application is ready for testing, uh, a dynamic code analysis needs to be done. This is again a black box testing of the security, where we see if the application can be attacked from the outside. And then finally, we get the security experts to come in and do their uh, aggressive penetration testing. Uh, but this frequent uh, uh, static code analysis or the static application security testing and the dynamic needs to be done frequently so that by the time the penetration is done, most of the issues are fixed, right? So you can follow the OS standards yeah, or you could, there are the standards as for, uh, 45 standards and so on as well. So now we've looked at all this. Now how do we make our quality engineers start thinking security. First of all, we need to get the security experts to be friends to quality engineers. Now, don't you see something common uh, between these two people? Um, yeah, they are the, they are going to be the new BFF. Ideally what it is, is they basically need uh, to break the application. So the security team basically wants to break the application in terms of security. Find those broken loopholes. As the quality engineers would try to find the loopholes in terms of uh, functional testing or functional uh, aspect. So therefore, the mindset is the same. It's just that the aspect they think is different. So it's very easy for the security team to pour in their ideas into the quality engineer. As you can see, all quality engineers most of the time do frequent, I think most companies have now started using the sprint level testing and so on, where every uh, new feature is tested for every sprint and also uh, the uh, 
a basic regression is done around to see if that particular feature broke anything, uh, any other existing feature, right? So that methodology is already there. So we just need to uh, pour a little bit of the security essence here with the help of the security experts, right? The next thing is quality engineers think out of the box. If you give them one aspect, right? They start thinking on top of the box, on the side of the box, outside the box, and so on, right? So that's how the mindset is. So it's pretty easy to make them uh, change into uh, thinking uh, security as uh, the training has been given. Then obviously the, the app, the application knowledge is uh, high in terms of quality engineers because they test the application inside out. And therefore, if you uh, give them the idea of, okay, how SQL injection works, how cross-site scripting works, they know where the text boxes are. They know where they could put the input and they know where to go and test it, right? So that's one plus point as well. And moreover, the testing methodology is already in place. They, they, they write their test strategies, test plans, and everything is in place. They, they know how to uh, give in an exit report and so on. So there's nothing much extra to do, right? It's just uh, they start, they need to start thinking security. Next thing is, so you can see in the past, uh, the quality engineers and the security uh, functionality was basically uh, handled in two different phases, but now uh, security experts can give in some of their work to the quality engineers, which can be frequently done. So it wouldn't just wait till the end, but it will be frequently tested. So therefore, it adds value. So the next step, stepping stone two, is before uh, getting into automation and getting into continuous testing let's first do the, the testing manually, right? Let's understand what uh, the uh, quality uh, security testing is gonna be. So, how do we get this? Yes, we got our security experts. There are very few of them because they're expensive, it's very hard to find them, and it's obviously they would be uh, engaged in various different teams at the same time. Yeah, so then they do have a bandwidth as well. But here we have tools that's available where we could, uh, these are all tools that mimic vulnerable applications where you could go and uh, test these applications. So it's, they give methods on how you can do an SQL injection and see outputs as well in these applications or across site scripting or broken access control. These are all like training applications where you could take time, uh, give the team uh, time to understand as well as learn uh, these uh, vulnerabilities. How can they exploit an application? So they can try it on WebBot, which is also provided by OS, or the damn vulnerable web application. Uh, didn't mean to swear, but yeah, that is uh, also available. And then OWASP iGoat, which is uh, available for anyone who's interested in doing mobile um, uh, testing, security testing and also uh, go through So these are not tools to do the security testing, but these are uh, basically applications where you can learn and understand, basically do those exploiting, because not all applications are going to have all the vulnerabilities. That's gonna be pretty bad, right? So therefore, these are applications which are super vulnerable. They're made for us to do security testing and understand and learn. So go ahead and start working manually and then start, then you could do it on your applications and see if they do have issues. Now we've got, uh, we've started working with the security experts, we've got the training, we start getting the knowledge. Next stepping stone three is which, uh, which uh, test should I start with is the question. So test to start with, uh, add value to the existing test. So you already would have tests, how do we add value? So in the, uh, ideally, there needs to be a slight process change as well. As I told you, we need to start thinking security from the beginning. So therefore, the security expert needs to be involved from the uh, discussion of high-level overview and sensitive data analysis. Also, uh, 
when it comes to thread modeling, reviewing as such business logic and so on, the particular discussions need to be uh, made throughout the team. The quality engineers and the developers also need to be involved so that they understand and then the quality engineers can create the test cases and be prepared to test them and the developers can make sure they know that they're going to be tested on that so they will have uh, an extra eye on making sure that they not we do not find any issues and then the uh, then the test cases are created and it could be created by the security experts with uh, working hand in hand with the quality engineers at a point when the quality engineers are uh, understanding and getting to the uh, phase of understanding security testing, uh, then they could just go easy on it. So initial stages, yes, there needs to be a bit of spoon feeding. There needs to be a bit of uh, helping hand from the security experts to the quality engineers, but gradually that will uh, change. So the reviewing uh, and helping to create new test cases needs to be done uh, with the security experts and the quality engineers. And then the defects can be created and then the rest of the team can get access to that after doing the testing. So these are some of the tests that you can start with. So you can start with authentication and authorization. So basically, uh, this is something that I spoke to you about. So you could have a look at them as well, uh, where you could make sure that uh, you check if they're secure. Then uh, try to do a certain get requests to try and get those sensitive data out, like uh, the credit card details or the social security number or some, something of that sort try uploading malicious uh, 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 documents. Uh, you could get access to them, uh, your security expert would have them, even sometimes the developers do have them. So get hold of them, try uploading, and try to exploit the application. And you could also test the SSL, CSL, uh, if you have access to them, see if any of the response headers are giving those unwanted details details that shouldn't be given, those precious details that shouldn't be given in terms of tokens and so on, and also see if error, error handling is done. Like it does, uh, if there's a failure, there's the code doesn't pop out and show, hello, this is the code, or basically try to show uh, that, uh, oh, the username you put is correct, but the password is wrong. So in that way, it's giving, it's making the attacker's life easy. You don't want that, right? So uh, you can start with tests like that. So this is some, uh, uh, this is a test case form that is encouraged by OWASP actually, uh, where you could start working as you work with the, the security experts, initial stages, it's better to all, always have uh, the test case with the vulnerability description and certain recommendations. So this is more like checking of a, if there's existence of broken access control. So where uh, if the admin user, sorry, the general user can access as an admin. So in that way, uh, you could also access, uh, see uh, different pages, try to do different uh, vulnerability attacks. So these descriptions can be provided to security experts. It takes some time, but the team will get to that soon. So the next question, the next uh, step is, uh, coming, uh, spotting the right uh, set of tools. So yes, you can't always do it manually. You need to uh, get hold of a tool because you want to get into automation and you want to get into sec uh, continuous security testing. So make sure that you choose a tool that fits the requirement and the current tech stack, right? If it doesn't uh, uh, fit your tech stack, then it's not going to be helpful. Uh, in terms of even the continuous integration tools that you're using, if it doesn't work hand in hand, then you will have to look for a tool that works with it. So that you don't uh, mess up the current uh, uh, ecosystem, but you bring in a particular uh, tool that fits your ecosystem. So this decision needs to be done by the entire team, uh, as in you need to get the help of the security experts, developers, uh, quality engineers and the uh, DevOps, right? So I'm just going to introduce a tool to you which is easy to use, uh, available to uh, everyone. It's found, uh, it's an open source tool. Uh, but for those, this is 
not like the best tool that you should use. I'm not promoting the tool. But what I'm trying to say is if you are a beginner and you don't want to spend any money for now, just want to start with security testing and lead to security, uh, continuous testing for now to just get your hands dirty on security testing. Uh, you can go ahead and use this tool. So this is a flagship pro project provided by uh, OWASP, which is called the Attack Proxy. Uh, you can also uh, use, uh, there's quite a lot of features, even, I mean, I know there's a perception that many people think open source doesn't really work, especially in terms of security. Well, not the case. I mean, if you want to go in deep, yes, it's better to go for a better tool or a, a tool that uh, have more features, but this is a small package with whatever that's needed for a beginner. And it also has report generation uh, and session comparison, so it's quite helpful. So the idea is that you would have the that proxy in the middle uh, between your browser and uh, your uh, web application. So ideally, what a web application, uh, how we would access a web application is via a browser. But in between, we have this Zap who will be recording all the issues and vulnerabilities when uh, we access the application via the browser. So there's a lot, in case you're interested, go ahead and there's a lot of videos that help you to understand and use this. It's quite user-friendly. Uh, so we'll uh, move on to the next stepping stone. Now we've chosen our tool. Um, now we want to get into the phase of automation testing, right? The tool that you choose, make sure that it works right with automation testing. So let's uh, look at uh, the entire process. So I'm again uh, displaying the demo on Zep because again, it's free for you to use. Uh, anyone who wants to get back after this um, particular demo, session you could go just when you have free time just have a look at it you could sit, set it up in my, in your local i mean even the demos that i'm showing you i set it up locally uh, and i uh, tried them locally as well so uh, therefore you could also set this up and uh, get used to it as well so anyone who is used to selenium or heard about it uh, you would uh, know that it's a web driver that triggers uh, uh, the web driver, so it runs the test via the browser on the web application. But here, for a difference, we have just in the middle recording all the vulnerabilities. So let's have a quick demonstration on that, right? So this is my Zap, right? So I go into tools, I go into option because I want to set up the proxy. So I'm, I'm setting up a local proxy, I'm specifying the port. And also, you should make sure that you have uh, the API uh, key disabled because I'm not going to use that. So initially, if you want to uh, start the test, you could avoid having the API key. However, uh, if you want to go more uh, secure, you could provide an API key and go ahead with that as well. So I'm using a Maven project here. Uh, and I have specified the, the dependencies, as you can see, and uh, I have specified the, the local host and uh, the port 8888, which was provided in the client, or the Zap proxy client. Now, I have written a function which basically um, enables the proxy scanner to be done during my test, and I have specified that in my before class. I am also doing a Zap FIDA scan, which is basically a scan that the, is done to uh, make sure that you have any entry point, uh, uh, you give the entry points of the application. Now, the test is basically a before login test, which is traverses the application, and I make sure that the uh, alerts are picked up. So the uh, vulnerabilities are picked up, and if they are zero, then the test passes or it fails. And then we have the uh, another test which basically runs uh, after login. Now, how do we do this scan, uh, scanning? So the Zap proxy API provides certain scanning uh, codes or scanner ID, which uh, you can find over here, Zap API scan uh, in the GitHub. 
where you could find the specific uh, codes. I just provided a few codes in my uh, particular code, but uh, you could uh, provide more scan IDs uh, so that you could uh, spot them as well. And then you could uh, obviously uh, have that available so that you could see the alerts available and then run the test. So now that we see that as the test has started, right? Okay. Uh, so the test has started. I've initiated the test, and uh, initially uh, we are running the test uh, for uh, after login. So he's going to log in now, and you can see this is budget store. So this is again I'm using a Docker image. This is a tool again you can use uh, to learn security testing. So here I put in a string value which is not acceptable, but the code has been revealed here, which is not acceptable again so uh, this is an issue so you could make sure that you make uh, make sure when your automation tests are running with the proxy or any other tool they cover these main aspects they look into these entry points put in uh, uh, values that are not supposed to be put in and see if the code is being uh, shot out right so uh, yeah so you could also see that the scanning has been done it's a spider scan, so I said it just traverses through the uh, uh, URLs that you can get hold of and see if it could run any uh, particular vulnerable attacks on it. So here, this is a test uh, before login. So basically, uh, a usual thing. So this is like mimicking an e-commerce application, highly vulnerable. And you could see that on the side, uh, there'll be pop-up when issues are found so just uh, look can uh, look at the uh, your right hand side uh, after some time when the issues are, are found by the spider scan it will also pop up on the uh, side saying uh, cross site scripting re reflected and so on okay so it's looking um, making sure to look into all those tick boxes uh, where we see that the issues are mostly found. So you could see those alerts that are on the side, uh, where again, this helps you to understand. So if you find an issue when you're testing it manually, uh, also you could uh, see that those values are uh, see, uh, basically that's an SQL injection or a cross-site scripting. So, right. So as you can see, uh, we have seen three alerts because this particular test had three issues. And this is uh, the uh, before login where it uh, tried to register. So all these places or where the issue was found has been seen. So you could again go and manually test them and see if they are actually issues, whether they are false positives by any chance as well. Next, we would uh, yeah, you could also look at this and you could see that uh, the after login where the login page is uh, is vulnerable for SQL injections, right? So in that way, we can fail the test or pass the test as well. So we've looked at that. Now the next stepping stone is to get into security, continuous security testing. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you on how we could use Jenkins that, uh, Jenkins plugin. So again, I'm using open source tools for integrate, continuous integration and ZEP so that you could go and use them yourself. Uh, it has very good reports for you to see and understand as well. So let's jump into understanding what actually happened. So obviously Jenkins triggers the application which is uh, using, uh, which is basically uh, using the ZAP proxy and the application, the browser to uh, run the uh, test on the uh, application. So once the issues are found, they are reported. You could see a nice report. I'll show that to you as well. And then you could uh, also add them to your issue tracking application. Again. Make sure that all these tool stacks work hand in hand uh, if you want to encounter such a structure. So 
let's go into a final demonstration. Right. So this is my Jenkins. It's my local machine. I just set this up uh, for myself. I'm going into my a, uh, a manage plugin. I'm adding this particular plugin. So as you can see, I make sure that I add uh, the official uh, OS Zap uh, Jenkins plugin, right? Uh, and then I also want to show you the lovely HTML report. Uh, so I am adding the HTML plugin as well. So next is I again go into manage Jenkins and configure the system to make sure that it works with my Zap proxy. So just letting you know Jenkins or your integration system needs to be in the same place where your uh, proxy is initially if you're doing it locally so that it can be accessed. So here I'm trying to get the home. So I'm using a Mac, but in case you are interested and you have Windows machine or a uh, Linux machine, you can go ahead and uh, see the uh, that OS that where they would show you on how it can be achieved, right? And later on, I am going into new item and I'm going to create a project. So now I uh, run the project. Once the project is done, I uh, click on build now because I want to create a workspace. Why do I want to create a workspace? Because I want to load sessions. So you could record sessions with OS Zap and load it if required. So I'll show it to you anyway. So here I, in the build configuration, execute Zap, I edit and I make sure that my OS Zap has all the local proxy details. So I have it ready running when Jenkins is going to run. Make sure that is on a persist persist session. Uh, and I also make sure that the uh, particular values uh, for the port and all is set accordingly. So here I can also see that I've set the proxy home. I'm uh, calling it the, uh, so here you could load a session, as you could see. If you have it in the workspace, you can load sessions as well. But I'm going to use Persist Sessions. And I'm going to give the entry point. Uh, you can give a context name. So I'm saying budget store, use any other thing that comes after budget store uh, so that it traverses through most of the URLs it can. Uh, so I'm using the spider scan and uh, the active scan. And you can use this plugin as a background uh, behind your build, if uh, in that case, or even the uh, background uh, when you're doing your automation test uh, build as well. And then finally, uh, we have uh, reports available for us to have a look at. So now I'm going to trigger the test. Right. And you uh, would see that the, the test has started. You could see details on how the test is running in your Jenkins log itself. And let's quickly jump into, since we are running out of time, uh, to the report. So as you can see, uh, yeah, let's go into the Jenkins dashboard, and I want to see the HTML report. So this is a report that came out after that uh, short scan. Uh, you can uh, express how much time you want to scan it and so on as well. But I just did a quick one for you to have a look at. And there you could find all the specific details of the particular scan. And uh, that's very helpful in terms of running, understanding the issues found. So now we've looked at how we get the quality engineers to start thinking security. They get trained and helped by security experts. They start doing manual testing. Then they move into choosing tools that can help them with automation. And then they do automation testing. And then finally, getting into continuous security testing. So today's key takeaways are that security defects need to be spotted at an early stage. You can't wait uh, at the last minute to fix a pile of security issues. That's not happening. Uh, and uh, in that way, I know we tend to forget uh, security most of the time, but that's not cool, right? Next thing is we need to make sure that uh, uh, there's a lot of security coverage. And that is why we have this uh, idea of bringing quality engineers into the picture of doing 
continuous security testing, and then the security experts coming in and doing more rigorous uh, the penetration testing and so on. And moreover, we can use the existing process and the resources and do the training and give in the essence of security and make a change here. And uh, finally, both the security team and the quality engineers have visibility to the defects at an early stage, which will help uh, the application to be more secure in the future. So finally, oh, I didn't mean to say elephant and mice, but mouse, but uh, start small and aim big. So start with little tests and then get to the big picture. So don't let those nasty bugs ruin your choke application. Just that step step. It doesn't have to be that, but you could get rid of those issues at a very early stage. These are my details. You can find me on Twitter, you can connect to me on LinkedIn, and these are the references that I've used. Please let me know if you have any questions. Hey, Christina. Thank you so much for the insightful session. And uh, uh, I mean, on starting with security testing and how to take our first steps. Uh, many thanks for sharing so many details. It really helps. And we do have questions. I'm going to start with uh, them, and we will probably not be able to take them all, but uh, we'll try to get them as quickly as much as we can, as many as we can. Sure. So the first one says, uh, your first cartoon uh, is replacing square wheels on a cart with <clears throat> round wheels. Uh, a security issue sounds more like a productivity or an efficiency issue. It's on the SpongeBob, I believe. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the question there? And they are asking if uh, that's a security issue. I mean, is that purposefully done or is that uh, by chance that it's a uh, round wheel instead of uh, square? Okay, so uh, what I was trying to say is obviously rather than having a square wheel uh, cart, uh, which is going to be a bit difficult to run, we get round wheels and that's where we put in the value of security testing to run the application uh, more faster. Uh, in terms of not the speed, but more of a secure concept where the application needs to be uh, highly secure. Uh, and if we don't think about security, then the application is not ready to go live, uh, or that cart, which is the application, is not really ready to go live uh, in terms of uh, giving it to the end users. Okay. I hope that answers. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the next question is: uh, Can this be used with JavaScript too? As you mentioned, using with Selenium WebDriver. Currently, I am using Nightwatch.js. Can it be integrated in that framework? I believe it can be because I've yeah I've actually seen some details on it. But to be honest, I haven't used it with uh, JavaScript. Uh, but then uh, you could use uh, this as I believe with, uh, as I've seen some dependencies that are available for that because it works with various different languages uh, like uh, Ruby uh, and I believe even C Sharp as well. So yeah, it's good to go and go ahead and give it a shot. Great. Uh, next question is, uh, what were the major roadblocks that you faced when trying uh, this for the first time? Uh, I mean, you yourself, or if others have shared with you any challenges. Right. So if you're talking about trying to, if it's from the early stages of getting the uh, engineers to try to understand security, uh, that was quite a challenge. But uh, as some people tend to see, there's this fear when you see the, hear the word security, I have noticed even the rather than performance, I've heard, I've seen uh, when the word security comes, everyone gets a bit worried and anxious. But that's uh, not something that you need to worry about. So uh, keep on encouraging the team. But about this tool, so uh, 
to be honest, I'm not, we are not using Zep anymore. Uh, we've moved on to other tools, but uh, when I started using Zep, I had issues on getting the uh, plugin set up, especially uh, in terms of getting the, the home details. Uh, it wasn't working, so I had to give some, uh, you could also have uh, issues where you might have to give some permissions to access the particular uh, the application uh, if you're using Jenkins uh, and so on. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. If you're using it manually, just the application, I had no issues. It was just put on. And even uh, with uh, Selenium, since the API document, uh, documentation is quite helpful, I didn't have much of an issue. But uh, yeah, using it with Jenkins, if you are going with the plugin option, it because they had a previous plugin before, and that had a lot of uh, issues, as in it uh, functionality issues. So this is an advanced plugin, and uh, it was quite uh, easier to use than the one that was available previously. Yeah. Great, Christina. I'm going to take one last question uh, because we are sure. short on time. We are already running over. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, quality engineers need to understand the architecture in order to do threat, uh, threat modeling. In your experience, do uh, QEs normally, are they able to do so? Are they able to study the architecture? Uh, not most of them. Yes, I agree. It uh, takes uh, some time and training. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't say 100% of the uh, quality engineers do understand. So. Uh, that is why uh, most of the time we tend to embed someone who is uh, who understands uh, the architecture and uh, things like the non-functional testing, also part of uh, the particular sprint teams or the scrum teams, uh, so that uh, they will be able to understand and help the uh, the other testers. So it's always good to have a I would say a subject matter expert in that term to be part of the Scrum team from the testing side if you want to achieve this, at least in the initial steps. And then you could get to uh, letting the rest of the testers get to the phase of doing it by themselves. All right. Uh, that will be all for now, Christina, for the sure. questions. Uh, thank you so much. And again, it was very insightful, and I really hope people tran uh, transfer this knowledge into application and try to uh, implement. Sure, yeah. Thank you for the true. demo as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, everyone, this concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for joining and uh, most importantly, thank you for being engaging and making the most of the webinar for yourself and the whole group. And stay tuned for the for more webinars on softwaretestpro.com. We have an upcoming webinar, which is high impact customer testing in agile and continuous delivery environments on the 8th of July. The speaker is Luke Frailer, sorry, Frailer, who's the CEO of uh, Center code, and in this presentation, you will learn how to use a guided tour of product experiences to gather issues, ideas, and praise to evaluate and improve the stability, satisfaction, and maturity of your product. If the subject interests you, please do sign up for the same at softwaretestpro.com. And before I leave, let me also remind you the call for submissions for these webinars is open and will remain open all year round. Please do send in your proposals at the given link. Thank you, everyone. Please stay healthy and stay safe and practice social distancing and good luck for all you do. Bye.